Hey everyone, the castle here. All right, so uh, first, right away, I want to talk about uh, Revulsion. Um, I plan on getting a new patch for the uh, game out either uh, yes last night or tonight. Um, might take just a little bit longer because I need to test the I need to test it and everything like that in order to be able to uh, make sure that I didn't introduce any new bugs or anything like that. I just want to get that out there. Um, it'll be you know it'll be really soon. I'm going to release this patch. Now after this patch is done and if there are no further errors which you know I mean it, hey I'll, I'll keep working on it until I fix everything that I need to fix but um, I'm gonna be sort of rolling off on the new game and um, I have a I have a really interesting idea that really takes things a lot further than I was planning on and works a hell of a lot better with the technology that I have available to me utilizing the hierarchical instancing inside of my multi in-game multiplayer level editor. So um, one of the things I was kind of focusing maybe too much on was building organic worlds and having that sort of um, you know like feeling of like building you know slapping down a terrain and like having mountains and valleys and stuff like that and I was thinking about that maybe a little too much. I just recently remembered like last night I, I kind of had a weird dream about it um and it was it it kind of it reminded me have you ever heard of blame no um blame has a really insane world it's its world is sort of you know it's sort of built around this like you know that it's being infinitely built by these constructors and nobody really knows how to turn them off so they just kept going and going and going and they've created you know this world where there's just it's so dangerous and mysterious and beautiful and and and, and insane and it just it, it sort of just keeps going on and on and on and everything like that and there's a, there's a certain I don't know there's a certain beauty to it and a mysteriousness to it and it's scary it's a it's atmospheric what if what if I went in this direction with an open world survival game? This would work beautifully with what I have. This would work absolutely beautifully with what I have already set up. Building something crazy like this and just kind of going with it, like look at this right here. Like this is a game that already kind of so I actually have a reference already as we speak of what you know it would look like in 3D and tr you know sort of translate it and it's beautiful it's beautiful uh, you know of course I'm going with textures I'm you know going to keep going with what you know the the general art style that I already had planned but um can you imagine trying to stay alive in a world of like this like finding food and maybe there's a fabricator that can you know generate the things that you need but you don't you have to find resources uh you know sort of scattered all over and there there are creatures that you can fight you know there's a scourge there's the there's you know sentient a rogue sentient ai or or you know um watchers and you know what I mean like there's all this different kind of constructors maybe even having like a can you imagine like having these like large creatures that sort of just sort of flow between these uh, big areas where it's just like you, you know these creatures that you don't want to fight but then there's stuff that you can fight so like there's some skull level type stuff that just exists that sort of just adds to the ambience you don't want to get in their way they kinda of, they might ignore you or they're there or they're a constant dangerous threat where you got to keep in mind to stay out of their way and whatever right this would be amazing nobody's doing anything like this nobody's doing anything like this right now as far as I know doing an open world survival experience in an environment like this would be fucking amazing. Absolutely amazing. I don't know what else to say. I mean, look at these. You see these uh, constructions like these. There would be no sunlight. 
so everything would be lit from the you know the actual um, areas and maybe providing power to an, one of these nodes like this would allow you to do more in that area than before and like um, maybe there's like different ways and stuff like that in this kind of a world I would allow the player I would allow players to you know choose anywhere that they want to actually uh, call their fort so they like you can have a place that is actually you can claim you can place like a block down that is like a claim block or a device of some sort that claims the area and makes that your fort um, sort of similar to like seven days to die like I wouldn't actually need to worry about limiting players where they where they can try to construct I mean there are obviously going to be places that are, are not a very good spot because there'll be you know dangers constant threats um, you never really know what to expect but imagine if like Imagine if you're in some place like this and you're just trying to survive. You're trying to, uh, I mean, this, this goes perfectly with, with all of my other ideas. It, it, you know, uh, the idea of having humans, transhumanists, and sentients, right? You have your, you have your transhumanists who are, are kind of like, you know, um, people who are, you know, partially, you know, they, they have, they still have, like, some human, humanity in them, but there's, there's some things like that, but then there are the, the, the sentients who are sort of just, uh, you know, they, they're, 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 well, they're, they're completely robotic and everything like that, and maybe following, like, a directive or, or something, you know, um, when you look up instead of a sky, you're gonna see these, this crazy struct, you know, structures and structures and structures everywhere, and like when you go back down and you see all this kind of like gothic like you know uh, arch ceilings and sections that are sort of smashed into each other or maybe there's maybe there's a little bit of destruction maybe there's look just look at this like uh i want to be able to see a bigger picture of this but You you just see this, this this sprawling, crazy place, and um, the biggest challenge I think with an environment like this is to make sure that the player simply just doesn't get lost. But I, there's a lot of different ways I can go about doing that. Maybe getting lost too is part of the story. Um, but like there are ways to 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 you know to lessen how bad that might feel. But um, this is now. This is a game that already exists. It's free on uh, Steam right now, and it has it. It already is built very much with this sort of environment in mind. But like, I would love to sort of capture this. You know, this sort of feeling. Got it even in VR. Like, to imagine and uh, having this, this sort of thing in VR as well. Man. Um, you know, there's always kind of a threat. There's always kind of a feeling of, of, uh, dread. Now I gotta, I gotta wonder about that though, because like, I mean, obviously there's going to be stuff that's just going to be absolutely terrifying in a, in a world like this. Right. And, uh, I don't know if people want to experience that in an open world survival Kind of a thing because now because it might be too much you know what i mean it might be too draining to be that afraid all the time but you know, maybe uh maybe the stuff that you, you, you know maybe that constant fear um could be one of the things that sort of defines the experience i think you know but like just imagine this like so with the hierarchical instancing i can build a world like this uh, by just building the chunks and then putting the chunks together and then putting those chunks together and then putting more chunks together and then you know what i mean it's exactly how the constructors would have constructed this world themselves in other words the the mem the, the the um the solution in from which i would actually build the world in the first place matches that of what 
the AI would have done as well. Just sort of further bringing things together in that sort of sense. All in a multiplayer level editor, right? So, like, it's possible to build this whole thing and just sort of bring these pieces and sort of bring these chunks together and sort of copy them around and, and maybe even give them slight rotations so that they can kind of meet up in different ways and... Right? I mean, just think about it. Man, look at how... Can you imagine being in a situation like this? Now, let me move my head. You know, there's... You're... Maybe you're a human. Or you're a transhumanist. You lost your arm. You're... You're, you know, you were... Uh, you're fighting. And there's just too many enemies. And now you're kind of hiding as, you know... Uh, uh, an, uh, you know, the enemy is searching for you in an area where you had to run for cover or something like that. Yeah. Man. Yeah, this is absolutely perfect. This would be amazing. All right, so uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say uh, expect to see some stuff. I uh, Given the system that I already have in place right now, it wouldn't take very much for me to uh, generate the uh, building blocks that I'm going to need in order to begin uh, blocking this kind of stuff out. And I can make heavy use of the hierarchical instancing uh, to really get things in place right away and make it so that it's very easy for me to make these big sprawling worlds without having to overwhelm myself with, you know, the, um, the, the requirements. Like, you know, you only make like two or three bridges and then I can just open up the bridge prefab and work with the bridge prefab. Uh, to make it look good, and then automatically all of the bridge prefabs that I need to look good will automatically look good, you know, in, in the actual game. Um, this means that there's probably going to be a lot of level design stuff coming up very soon. I'll probably be streaming again and doing a lot of that. Now, um, with that said, I, I'm not really sure if I'm going to be talking about this. If you're only watching my videos on the Revulsion uh, Steam page... Uh, you might want to subscribe to me on YouTube, otherwise, because this is not related to uh, Revulsion anymore. This is this is going in a new um, a new direction, um, you know, a, a a a new game. I might I was thinking of maybe uh, looking for a name for it. Um, I'm sort of leaning in the direction of something like X Alive or Cyberpunk Survival, or something along those lines, right? Um, not really sure. X Alive sounds interesting to me, but it's probably already taken. I'll have to I'll have to look around to see what would be a good name for it. But um, to be able to play in an environment like that and open world survival, where you're searching for food and supplies, and you're constantly looking, and maybe you have ways where you can fly a little bit, like you have like better movement, everything like that. Um, you, you know, it, it would have to be. Everything has to be constructed in a way where it's possible for you to um, have fun navigating without uh, getting too lost. And I'll have to implement mechanics that make sure that you have ways to uh, remember your path and stuff like that. Maybe you can leave, maybe instead of like an auto map, maybe you can leave like little beacons or something like that. Like you can craft these beacons or something and place them. And then, then you can look at, you know, the beacons and see, you know, the order in which the ones that you uh, clicked on. So you can kind of make your way back if you need to or something, you know, something along those lines. So that would be pretty interesting. Um, I'd have to design things in such a way where there are really no dead ends. So if you, as long as you, you know, have a compass or, or some kind of way of determining like which direction is north, you should be able to figure out, okay, I'm just going to keep going this way until I can get back to my fort. Or maybe there's just a way to fast travel to forts. Um, you know, directly or something, you know, something along those lines. But, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot of, like, really interesting ideas here. There's, there's some great stuff. Um, the zombie mentioned a, uh, a type of enemy that's called a scrapper. Like, it, you know, they wouldn't really go after humans because they're really only after scrap. And that would mean that transhumanists and, uh, 
and um, sentience would be, you know, would be in constant danger of those types of creatures. But humans would, can, you know, can almost coexist with them, um, unless the humans started, you know, gaining like really good gear and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden you would have to worry about that kind of, you know, the scrappers might come after you, and maybe scrappers are are not something that you want to fuck with. <laughs> Typically speaking, um, I, I really like the idea of having enemies that are meant to be fought and then enemies that are just not meant to be fought. You don't want to fight these things. They're too fucking dangerous. Like, they will fucking rip you apart. Sort of like the agents in the Matrix, you know. Uh... Okay, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to end this. Uh, take it easy. And, uh, yeah, watch my YouTube. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on this. Okay, take it easy.